Hi guys, and welcome to the Free Skate. Um, uh, my name is Ryan, and I am going to be your sole lone host today um, of the NHK recap because, well, Jesse's downstairs. I do have a very special guest, actually. He's behind me on the floor. Uh, Jersey? Jersey. Come say hi. Let's see. Up. Up. <laughs> Up. Up there. Up. 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 No, no, not on me. Up. No, not on me. Up. 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 Oh, there we go. That took like 12 tries. Okay, up on the bed. Up there. Hey, lie down. What do you have to say about free skate today? You have to say anything about the NHK trophy? What do you have to say? Here's Jesse coming in. Okay. So. Baby, what are you doing? Oh, what the heck? I can't. Oh my god. There's Jesse. Say hi. <laughs> Your ass is in the picture. I'm just busy doing this as usual. Don't worry. And you should be. So. Alright, so we're going to start with the ice dance. Um, so, Virtue and Moyer obviously won the an HK trophy. Uh, they were unbelievable again. Uh, they're just, they're so good. They're so smooth. They're so, they're just so much fun to watch. Um, they ended up getting 198.64 as a total, uh, 117.72 in the free skate, uh, which, uh, that was, uh, season's best for them in the free skate. So they're about a point and a half off of the French for season best free skates so that's actually really close so that's actually really good they're coming up there because they have a lead of the short dance well not this time because they had some mess up on the twizzles but um so that lift where she jumps up and she flips on her shoulders and they blindly spin really fast is just unbelievable i think that is like the coolest thing to watch that must be so difficult for them to do and they do it so so good uh then the end of the program with their massive emotion when she dies in his arms is just ridiculous to watch it's definitely one of the most emotional ice dances i've probably ever seen um so it's nice to see that they're closing in on the french scores um they were just shy of 200 this time because i guess uh their short dance had uh scott i think it was scott had the mistake in the twizzle so that definitely dropped them down a bit um the italians who finished third for the second year in a row at nhk um they are so nice to watch skate uh okay. very nice opening lifts um to set the program up uh, very light music their skating was very easy um they're just so nice to watch um they're 2014 world champions for a reason. Um, they're still, you know what, they're about 10 points off, uh, what, 186.56, so they're 10 points off, um, 12 points off of what Virtue and Moyer um, are getting. Um, hopefully they can close that gap a little bit. I don't think they'll get to those scores again, but um, they're definitely a threat for a world medal anyways. Um you know who I actually really liked? Um, two of the ones who finished a little bit lower, uh, Coombs and Buckland from Great Britain and um, Borne Bordry and Sorensen from Denmark. Uh, they, I think they had really original lifts in their program. Um, Bordry and Sorensen were like, what, 99 plus points? So they had their goal of uh, just about 100 points for their free skate. So they were just off. They were so close. You could tell them when they were... Uh, when they were watching for their scores they were really intent on getting that 100 and they just missed it so uh good for them um i really like dubrin and Lausanne's influence that they have on uh, Baudry and Sorens, and you can really see their originality um some of their lifts um and their their movements are very original to them um and it was nice to it was just nice to see um somebody bringing something original to ice dance um, I'd like to see more pizzazz with the choreography um, and a little bit more speed, but other than that, it was a really good skate. Uh, Coombs and Buckland, too. Same thing with the this, this speed. I think they need to pick it up a little bit, uh, but one of their favorite, I think the highlight of the program was that, that lift where uh, he ended up having her up, and then he 
got her to hold his leg and then she went into a he went into a spiral position with him st with her still on his leg the core strength that that must have taken to do that is sick i don't, definitely don't think i could do that um so boldry and sorens ended up uh like i said with 99 plus on the free dance um and coombs and buckland um they, you know what, they were 92.5. They were quite a bit lower, and I'm not entirely sure why. Um, I would have to actually go into the score, to the score sheets and check because um, they seemed a bit surprised at that score. They thought it was very, very low, and they actually ended up falling way down. Um, they only totaled 158.15, and I think they definitely aimed for a lot higher than that, and so they must have lost some levels on something. I'm not too sure what it was. Um, and Hubble and Donahue, um, you know what, I was watching the CBC broadcast and Carol was raving about them and, uh, saying how when she's got, when, uh, uh, Madison has attitude that they skate this program so much better. Um, I'm kind of indifferent to the program. Um, not too sure why I can't really pinpoint why it doesn't strike with me. Uh, they ended up with a silver medal at 184. 188.35 so that's a good three points above what chalk and baits are getting so that's uh you know they're ahead of them so they're you know gonna look like uh favorites for maybe the silver medal after the shibutanis um for the united states championships um we are going to move to pairs. Um, so Sagan and Bilodeau, what a nice performance for them. Super clean. Uh, their side-by-sides were fantastic. Um, they hit both side-by-sides. Gorgeously clean skate. Um, exactly what they need. They look so comfortable um, with their music. Um, and they looked very comfortable skating this time. They didn't look nervous at all. They... Um, had nice flow to their program uh their elements were just it was just nice and i think they really need that that was really going to boost their confidence especially going into nationals and going into olympics where they um hope to challenge for a spot you know canada's got three teams that are going to be going and uh there's probably four four or five teams that are going to be in the mix for placing in the the top three for sure this year um Sui and han what do we say about them they're just impeccable everything about them is just so good on the ice what they do they're so just they're so smooth their jumps are so on this year uh their spins are much more um in unison than they have ever been um that i can't even critique them they're just that good uh 234.53 was their total so that's um is 12 points higher than Duhamel and Radford were SK Canada with their personal best. So uh, good on them. Um, speaking of Duhamel and Radford, uh, their score was 222 that they had their personal best on. And uh, who was it? Uh, Stobolva and Klimov actually ended up getting 222 as well. They beat uh, uh, um, the Canadians by like 2.22 to 0.74. Um, that was the difference in their scores with, um, their respective competitions. Um, you know what? I really like the landing of their throw trip of flip. Uh, I think it has a ton of, um, flow coming out of it. Really good position. Um, it just doesn't travel very much. So, um, I don't know what, uh, they, they have to work on to get it to travel further, but I think they need to get that to travel, uh, further to get some uh, higher GOEs on that. Um... Uh, he missed the second uh, triple of the triple triple that they did. So they were actually trying a triple toe, triple toe, which is big points for pairs. Um, and he missed his second triple. So that, you know, dropped them a few points too. Um, their throw triple south, side by side was clean. Um, the only other critique that I can give them in that performance is um, that last lift that, that they were doing. And she was switching his... She was switching her feet from back to front while they were, like, turning, kind of, you know what I mean? Um, he looked like he was just losing her, um, her, her hand a little bit too far, and you could tell him he was really struggling to bring him, bring him back in, because that could have been pretty disastrous if she would have fallen in that lift. But, um, all's well, they ended up with, uh, that silver, or was it silver? Yeah, I think they ended up with that, that silver medal. 
Um, it's really nice to see them back and healthy and skating good again. Um, so that is the pairs that I'm just mentioning on right now. Um, I'm going to go down to, let's do the ladies. Um, so what I found interesting about the, well, the ladies interesting in general, Medvedev is human. She actually fell. Um, that I think the world was shocked when they saw that. She was shocked. Uh, the commentators in every language were shocked. Um, that hasn't been seen very much at all in the last few years. And then her second jump, she didn't fall, but she messed it up again. Um, very interesting, I found. Uh, the first judge is from Russia. And judge number one... On the respective jumps on the fall, gave her a minus two instead of a minus three on grade of execution. And the other jump, the lutz that she messed up on, uh, she gave her a GOE of minus one and all the other ones were a minus two. So the Russian judge had a little bit of a higher GOE for Medvedev, even though there was that fall and um, that mistake. But all of the other marks that uh, they gave, I can't say were, uh, were biased at all. I think the judge was uh, right on. Um, it was just that that one, um, th those two elements, those two opening elements that I found really interesting that the Russian judge had uh, Medvedeva with a higher GOE than all the rest of them, even though there was like a clearly blatant fall. Um, so Medvedeva was 224.39, like a human score. Um, she was 15 points off her personal best pretty much. Um, and you know what, um, now that we've seen it, I'm going to reiterate again, if Osmond or Costner do end up skating clean and Medvedeva ends up messing up like that again and you know what she's she's beatable now because those are scores that both of those skaters can can at attain so I think it's going to be a very interesting come Olympics and uh, the world championships um Costner you know what she had her mistakes in the free skate as well um so she only ended up with a uh, 212 uh which is what around Osmond got last time too because Osmond messed up in her last uh, free skate as well um so Costner ended up with the the silver um but you know what um her speed is back her jumps are mostly back her spins are back everything she's doing right now Costner is telling me that she is a metal threat for the Olympics um, so Italy has something to really look forward to come into the women's figure skating event. Uh, there's a favor for the podium, which, you know what, if Costner wasn't coming back, obviously nobody would be talking about that. Um, the bronze medalist, the Russian girl, um, she was lovely to watch. Um, I really liked her speed. I really liked her jumps. Um, I thought she looked very at ease on the ice. Um, I had heard uh, from, I think it was when I was watching the CBC broadcast, I heard Tracy Wilson, I think it was Tracy Wilson, no, actually I don't even know who it was, it was somebody, uh, they were saying how uh, this girl the last few years had been dropping out of competitions because she has some sort of um, disease that, that she deals with where particles of her bone and cartilage break off and get lost in her joints or in, I don't know, something, something to do with that. Um, so it's obviously very painful and she can't skate when that happens. So the poor girl has to go through all of that. Um, and hopefully by competition time, she is, is ready. Um, but, so, but you know what, you would have never thought that in that competition because she was like bang on, she hit everything. And you know what, she beat Carolina Costner in the free skate too. So, you know what, you put her in the mix in Russia. I don't even... Russian nationals, man, you guys, Russian nationals, just think how tough Russian nationals is going to be. That that competition is debatably harder to win than the world championships. <laughs> like, or, it, re, ridiculous. There's seven to ten Russian ladies that on any given day could win a medal at their own championships. That's ridiculous. Um, I would actually love to go see Russian nationals myself just to see the drama that would unfold. <laughs> Uh, I think it'd be a lot of fun to go see. Um, so, um, Tsurskaya, she was 10 points off the PCS of Costner. Um, 
so in that respect she has a little bit to work on um but her technical is right up there um another one i'm going to mention elena leonova she's back and she was better than ever in this competition it was so good to see the veteran come through um the 26 year old skated a clean event she hasn't done that in so long uh good for her i uh, was really really happy to see her and that bollywood program that she skates to is so intense she's just so into it she was so proud of herself after that event uh, she ended up scoring 190.95 points uh, that's definitely her highest score in a really long time for sure um so a little tidbit that i kind of um looked at I looked at everyone's score sheets uh, because the women's event um, I was questioning the scores on a few different skaters including uh, Rika Hongo um, I honestly she is one of my favorite skaters right now um, she's got to clean up some of her technical stuff though because you know what she's I love her power I love her jumps I love everything she's so like intense when she's skating her programs are so intense I love watching it this year um, there's an in in I can't talk. An interesting point here. Um, guess how many jumps were under rotated in this women's event? Guess I'm gonna give you time to guess in your head. There were fifteen under rotations in the women's event through all the competitors. Okay, it's 15 under-rotated jumps. That's insane. That's a lot of jumps under-rotated. Um, Reiko Hongo had uh, her triple flip, triple toe combination under-rotated. Her double axle, triple toe, double toe. The triple toe was under-rotated. Uh, her triple flip was downgraded. And her triple lutz was not a clear edge, so that's all her 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 jumps that she needs to fix to really boost her technical scores because she lost a ton of points with that, like a ton of points. Um, the men's event, I looked at the downgraded jumps in that one too. So fifteen for the women. Guess how many for the men? That's it. Two under rotations in the whole men's event and 15 in the ladies that's a big difference so these ladies got to step it up and make sure they're finishing the rotations on the ice because these judges are nailing them that's so many points off especially when you know what the fourth place downward I think almost every skater except Leonova had at least two under rotations that's crazy um, and how about the men oh I felt like I was back in 2012 watching the men, like these scores and the guys that had won the, the medals were like, you would have never thought that they would win a Grand Prix medal like again. Um, Sergei Voronov finally wins his first gold medal in the Grand Prix circuit, like ever. So the previous Russian champion, who's what, he's 29 now? Uh, ends up winning a gold medal at NHK. Obviously, we all know because, you know, Patrick bowed out and Han Yu was injured. Um, so he ends up stepping up and wins. Uh, he won a gold medal. And you know what? He had 271.12 points. Guys, 271 wins the gold medal. I'm used to, like, 300s here. That's It's so weird. Um, Adam Rippon silver like wow silver alexei bachenko bronze with 252 what like what i'm so back in 2012 2010 2011 back when patrick chan actually had a chance of winning the worlds <laughs> um jason brown not even on the podium fourth place um 245 at Keegan Messing, 235, fifth place. Um, although, you know what, Messing, I will I will say, I love his skating. Love it. His spins are the fastest men's spins I have debatably ever seen in my entire life. Like, probably next to Todd Eldridge. 
The last person I saw spin that fast would have been Todd Eldridge. His spins were ridiculous. Keegan Messing spins. If you guys haven't actually watched Keegan Messing, he's such a showman. He's like Kurt Browning, but younger. And his spins are like... <laughs> no, they're ridiculous. Um, poor Messing. He lost out on his triple axle. It was an invalid element, so he scored zero for his triple axel. It was null voided. Um, I think because he already repeated two triple jumps and you can't repeat more than two triple jumps. And that was his third repeat, I think. Somebody correct me if I'm wrong, but I think that's why it was um, voided. But you know what? Experience is the only thing that's really going to fix that again. Um, you know, he wasn't supposed to be on the Grand Prix event this time, but he was Patrick's um, um, substitute. So he ended up coming into his second Grand Prix event of the season. So that's some really good exposure for him. And I think that's really going to help him. Um, he did have two other triples in the program that I do think uh, he is going to add quads in uh, next to the end of the year. So he can be competitive. You know what? Who knows, Keegan Messing, b between Patrick and Nams and skating, I mean, who knows who's going to be going to the Olympics. We could have Nick Nadeau and um, Keegan Messing coming to the Olympics. Canadian men are wide open. Um, I wouldn't be one bit surprised if I saw Messing on the Olympic team at all. Between, you know what, Kevin Reynolds is not doing well this year. Nam Nguyen is not doing well this year. Patrick is not doing well this year. Who's going to step up? I think there's five to six guys in Canada that actually legit have a chance at a podium finish right now um, due to the inconsistencies that everyone's having. So Canadian Nationals are going to be really interesting for the men to see who gets these Olympic spots. Um, so Keegan Messing should have three quads for his free skate, and I think one of them is going to be a quad let's. So keep your eyes out for that one when uh, he skates next. Um... Yeah, you know what? So I blew through this competition. Um, look, we're only at 22 minutes. So that's actually really fantastic. I don't think I really have anything more to say. Um, I don't want to get into things too incredibly detailed right now because I'm tired and it's like, it's way past my bedtime. Honestly, I don't even know what time it is right now. I think it's like going on 11 o'clock p.m. right now. And I work tomorrow, so that's great. I have to wake up nice and early because I have to drive to the city because I don't live in the city. Um, anyways, um, I guess our next competition is the Grand Prix of France. Um, and we will recap that. Um, in the meantime, you know what? Uh, later this week, we might upload some videos. Um, uh, we have some interesting game ideas uh, involving figure skating um, that we want to try out. Uh, maybe some... I don't know about some charades or maybe some five second rule or oh, we were on a dinner date the other day at Pizza Hut and we were talking about figure skating games that we could do to entice you guys to watch us more. So anyway, subscribe, share, um, help us get more followers, um, tell us what you think, um, comment, email us, thefreeskate at gmail.com. And until next time, I and Ryan, I, I and Ryan, I, I and Ryan, peace.